Alright, what I want to do here is start from scratch and take a look at how we can improve upon some of the depth fading parameters that are in the taper by tweaking it with some of the parameters that are in the advanced tab of the lens shader. So what I've got here is, is uh, just some train tracks that don't have any shaders applied and I don't have any lens shaders so I'm going to basically just kind of do this from scratch. So I'll start just by creating a new partition and I'm going to assign a material to the partition. And I'm going to select the camera and I'll assign a lens shader to that, just our standard tune shader. Cool. Alright, so I'm going to go and take a look at some of the uh, parameters under the depth fading under here. So I'll go right to the distance fading and actually for starters why don't I just draw a render region. Oh, I, I also want to enable a ink only and a semi-region to show alpha so I can get a better look at the line. I'll also bump my anti-aliasing levels here a bit. Okay, so that, that's, that's pretty ugly. Um, what I want to do is I want to start to take a look at some of the depth depth based tapering here. So I'm going to go in here and basically just start cranking up the uh, amount in here. And what I can also do, what, one kind of neat trick is I can check how far things are when, when I start looking at how near or far I need things to be by going into my 3D scene here and if I take the furthest thing away from me, there's a parameter under here where I can enable uh, the distance to the output camera. So in here, that that's like about 107. Why don't I, s I, I can sort of open it up a little further out, and I'll, I'll set my depth to something like 150, for instance. And I'm going to set my minimum to say 2, and why don't I set my max to like 0 0.05 or something kind of small like that. Now let's take a look at, see what we get. Okay, this is still not looking too pretty. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to increase the exponent field under the uh, power, and I'm going to bump it up so it's a little bit more like inverse square, and let's see if that changes anything. Alright, so the, it's pretty significant actually. Uh, that's actually not so bad except that I can see that there's a fairly heavy um, kind of clotting going on at, at, at the deep end. And, but I, I would say this is probably about as good as I could probably get it under under the, under the distance space tapering so what I'm going to do is I want to take a look at some of the uh, advanced settings under here and there's a parameter under the advanced tab called fade sample threshold and basically what this is meant to do is sort of compensate for the fact that as things get further away more, more things will be facing you and so a lot of the um, if, if I start to bump, bump this up a bit and I increase the near and far gate of this parameter I can increase the threshold or, or a actually decrease the sensitivity of, of the shader at far distances and let's see it with if this helps us any. Okay, so that, that's not too bad. That, that seems to actually be helping quite a bit. I'm going I'm to let this go a little bit more. And uh, what, what, I, what I do notice though is if I look at the outside of my rails, there's a contour that um, and sort of intruding upon um, the, it, that has to do with the environment contour being um, kind of brought back into it and what I want to do is I'm gonna tweak that a bit and I'm gonna do that n not not in the lens shader but I'm, I'm actually just gonna add something to, to, to the scene for a second so what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna actually get a sphere here get, get primitive sphere 
and I'm gonna kind of go and kind of scale it up a bit. I'll just kind of put it around my scene, bump it up a bit, and I'm gonna throw a, a tune hose shader on it, and let's let's see if this helps us any. Okay, that, that seems to kind of do the job. That's not too bad. All, all I have to do is increase the anti-aliasing over there. But um, why don't I hide this just so we can see what kind of difference it makes. Okay, so this that's with... Actually, without, where it's getting all thicker. Okay, and I'll bring it back again just so we can see one more. Okay, there we go. So we can see it's a pretty significant uh, difference here. Now, and, and what, one of the other things here also is if now, now the only parameters that I've adjusted in this case from starting from scratch are is the tapering, the distance tapering, and the fade sample thresholds in the in the advanced tab. Now, on top of that, whatever I've I've done in here in terms of the distance fading, I can scale that by modifying the spread in the basic appearance tab. So this, this value still applies and will scale whatever you've set under these parameters. So if I were to set this to say 1 for instance, I can have my line weight while still enjoying all the effects of the depth fading and the advanced you know fade sample threshold stuff. So so whatever you're setting in terms of these spread values under these other criteria is still scaled by the uh, basic appearance spread value. So so think of this value sort of like your your global scale and all of these is qual quali qualifiers that sort of act under this. What one of the other things you're going to notice here is that we only kind of pick up the front sides, or, or the I'm sorry, the back sides of these ties here, and that's something that I s did kind of deliberately during the modeling phase. Where if I take a look at the the right view of this, and I'll just pick one of these ties here, I I made sure to kind of bevel it and swerve it outward so that there's a softer edge so that the tune shader will not will will tend to want to soften these uh, front facing edges because I, I thought that it would get a little bit too busy showing every edge as as we have to look down the, the, the track ties.